In this video, we'll briefly examine how Alma's heterodyne receivers work and how they create sidebands. When learning about Alma receivers and when using the Alma observing tool, you'll often see the term sideband as an upper sideband, lower sideband, and so on. But what does sideband mean? To answer this, we need to understand how Alma's receivers work. It's very difficult to design electronics that can efficiently process the very high frequency signals, up to hundreds of gigahertz, at which Alma observes. Instead, Alma uses a technology called heterodyne, or sometimes superheterodyne, receivers where the incoming signal at high frequency is down-converted to a much lower frequency using a device called a mixer. This down-conversion makes the signal much easier to amplify, detect, and process. The heterodyne receiver is the most commonly used technology in radio astronomy today, and indeed for radio communications in general. To learn how the signal is down-converted, let's take a closer look at how a typical ALMA receiver works. As the signal passes through the telescope, external optics divert the signal through a window into a cryostat, which has temperature stages at increasingly cold temperatures. The coldest stage is at 4 degrees Kelvin. Inside the cryostat is the cold cartridge assembly, or CCA, containing the first part of the receiver, including the mixer. Once through the cryostat window, the signal enters the feed horn, a small antenna which is shaped to capture the incoming frequencies of interest and funnel the output signal to the next stage of the receiver. From the feed horn, the signal passes through an orthomode transducer, or OMT, which uses specially designed waveguides to separate the two orthogonal polarizations, X and Y, into separate paths, which can be processed separately. Finally, we have arrived at the heart of the heterodyne receiver design, with a device known as a mixer block, where the down conversion occurs. There are two mixer blocks, one for each polarization. Inside each mixer block, is a waveguide network which feeds the sky signal along with the signal from a tunable oscillator, known as the local oscillator, or LO, into the superconducting mixers. The LO is tuned to a frequency a few gigahertz above or below the sky frequency, often referred to as the radio frequency, or RF, which we want to detect. By blending those two signals in the mixer, we produce an output signal at the difference between those two frequencies, called the intermediate frequency, or IF. But how does combining two high-frequency signals produce a lower-frequency signal? To understand why, let's experiment with sound waves. Recall from high school physics that when you set two tuning forks to vibrate, where one vibrates at almost, but not quite, the same frequency as the other, the mixed sound waves from the two tuning forks will interfere with each other, creating a beating effect. For example, here is a sound wave at 440 vibrations per second, or hertz. And here's the sound at a slightly higher frequency, 446 hertz. When played separately, they're almost indistinguishable. But if we mix these two sound waves together, we can hear an audible beating pattern of 6 beats per second, or 6 hertz. Note that we can get that same 6 hertz beating effect if we mix that 440 hertz pitch with one slightly lower in frequency, at 434 hertz.
Linking this back to our heterodyne receiver, we can think of the 440 Hz sound wave as the frequency of our local oscillator, or LO, and our 6 Hz beating as our intermediate frequency, or IF signal. The IF signal comes from mixing the LO with sound wave 6 Hz below the LO frequency, 434 Hz, which we call the lower sideband, and 6 Hz above the LO, 446 Hz, which we call the upper sideband. So how does this relate to ALMA receivers? Suppose we wanted to detect emission at, say, 434 GHz. We inject a signal from the LO of 440 GHz into the mixer and mix it with the sky signal we want to detect at 434 GHz. This generates beats at an intermediate frequency, or IF, of 6 GHz. Of course, the yellow signal at 440 GHz would also generate a 6 GHz IF from the sky signal at 446 GHz. In this case, we have 434 GHz in the lower sideband and 446 GHz in the upper sideband. Of course, this is not the whole story. Like sound waves, electromagnetic radiation exists over a continuum of frequencies. That 440 GHz ejected LO will mix with a signal at 435 GHz to create an IF at 5 GHz, or with a signal at 433 GHz to create an IF at 7 GHz, and so on, and similarly with the upper sideband. ALMA receivers are designed to be sensitive not just to a single IF frequency, but to a range a few gigahertz wide. Let's continue following the path of our signal as it passes through the receiver. The IF output from each of the two mixer blocks is fed to a device called an IF hybrid, which introduces phase shifts separating the upper and lower sidebands into two different paths, which can then be processed separately. We now have four independent signals with two orthogonal polarizations and an upper and lower sideband signal from each polarization. Some ALMA receivers, notably bands 9 and 10, do not split the upper and lower sidebands into separate signals. And in band 1, the lower sideband is discarded, leaving only the upper. Finally, the signals are fed into low noise amplifiers, which boost the signals by a large factor, close to 10,000, for further processing downline. The amplifiers are optimized to work over a range of IF frequencies of a few gigahertz for most ALMA receivers. After ALMA's receivers and correlators have been upgraded, thanks to the WSU project currently underway, this range will increase by a factor of two or more. The amplified signals then pass through a series of stages to bring them out from the coldest part of the receiver to the rest of the signal processing system, including the correlator. Here, the signals are processed to create basebands and spectral windows. Check out our video on sidebands, basebands, and spectral windows for more about how that happens. We've just taken a brief look at how ALMA's receivers work and learned how sidebands are generated. Check out our other videos, some of which are shown here. Happy, Happy observing! observing.